the arithmetic functions dn and sigma n. Here, we will be studying the two arithmetic functions dn, the divisor function and sigma n, the summation function. Let's start with dn. The divisor function dn gives us the number of divisors of n. How do we find the divisors of any given integer n? Let's see. The integer n can have three different types of form. First of all, n can be a prime number p. So, as we know that a prime number has only two divisors, one and the number itself. So, d of p will always be 2. This is the first formula. What if n is p to the power alpha? Then dp to the power alpha will be alpha plus 1. For example, if we take n to be 8, 8 can be written as 2 to the power 3 and d 2 to the power 3 using the formula will be 4. What if n is a composite number? Let's say n is p1 to the power alpha 1 p2 to the power alpha 2 dash 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 pr to the power alpha r. In that case, dn will be dp1 to the power alpha 1 dp2 to the power alpha 2 dash 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 dpr to the power alpha r. If we apply the second formula to each of the d's, we will get first term will be alpha 1 plus 1, second will be alpha 2 plus 1, dash dash alpha r plus 1 as d is a multiplicative function. Let's move on to the function sigma n, the summation function. The summation function sigma n gives us the sum of all the divisors of an integer n. So this does not mean that we have to find all the divisors of any given integer n and then write and write them and count the number we can always use the following formulas again there will be three cases what if n is a prime p we know that p has only two divisors one and p and if we add the two sigma of p will be p plus one what if n is p to the power alpha like we took n as eight which was two to the power three in that case, sigma p to the power alpha will be p to the power alpha plus 1 minus 1 upon p minus 1. Lastly, if n is a composite number, then let's say n is p1 to the power alpha 1, p2 to the power alpha 2, dash dash pr to the power alpha r. Then sigma n will be sigma p1 to the power alpha 1 into sigma p2 to the power alpha 2, dash 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 sigma pr to the power alpha r. We apply the second formula to each sigma and we will be getting sigma n as p1 to the power alpha 1 plus 1 minus 1 upon p1 minus 1 into p2 to the power alpha 2 plus 1 minus 1 upon p2 minus 1 into dash 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 pr to the power alpha r plus 1 minus 1 upon pr minus 1. We do this as sigma is a multiplicative function. Let's try some example. Given n is 245 and we are asked to find sigma of 245 and d of 245, we will first write n as product of prime powers. So n is written as 5 into 7 square. Sigma of 245 will be sigma of 5 into sigma of 7 square. We use the first formula for sigma 5, we get 5 plus 1. We use the second formula for sigma 7 square and we will get 7 to the power 2 plus 1 minus 1 upon 7 minus 1, which gives us 342. To find d of 245, we will write it as d of 5 into d of 7 square. Using the first formula for d, we get d5 as 2 multiplied by d of 7 square which is 2 plus 1, hence the answer is 6. We can check this manually. 245 has the following divisors 1, 5, 7, 35, 49 and 245. 
we can if we count them they are six in number so d of 245 is six if we add all these divisors we can see the sum comes out to be 24 342